Yes, Samzanzi, welcome back. We are opening up right here on S3. This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show. And let me tell you, it could not feel better because this morning we catch up with some of the heroes from Paris, the Blitzbox, who just secured a bronze medal at the Olympic Games. Now, the team clinched the medal in a thrilling finish, scoring a decisive try after the buzzer against Australia. So we brought in the big guns. We've got Siviwe, Soizwapi, we've got Roscoe Speckman, as well as Kewen Norkia in the building. Join us in the studio to chat about this amazing victory. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together! Yes! Oh, if there was more hype, boys, I would bring it, I would shower you in it. Thank you for what you've done. This is incredible and welcome back home. Woo, how are we feeling? Are we good? <laughs> yeah? Lots of emotion. I know you're still just landed, you're still fresh, and we still need to reflect on everything. But let's talk about this from the beginning again. Obviously, being the first team, well, one of the very last teams to actually qualify for the Olympics, there wasn't a lot of pressure on you. Almost like a weird feeling to see South African rugby as somewhat of an underdog in this competition. How do you guys make uh, having that mindset going into it? Is that almost better, not having as much pressure? Yeah, I must say it's, it's always nice to be the underdog because yeah. no one knows what to expect how you're going to play and so yeah, I think there's a bit pressure off you. So we just went to enter the tournament, be ourselves, do what we do best, don't focus on the other team, so yeah. Mm. Roscoe, you're someone that obviously has a plethora of experience when it comes to dealing with pressure. Um, you've faced this quite a bit. Do you think it's a better option to have that pressure off you in the games or do you prefer to have that sort of ego rub and knowing you're the, you're the, you're the defender? I think it goes both ways sometimes when, you, when you're number one and everyone wants to knock you down. But mm. this time it was a different story where we were, we were the last team to qualify and there was a little bit of pressure off us. Also, it was a special feeling just to, to get bronze and be on the podium again for me. My second time, it was, it was something special for me now because at the end of the day, there's not a lot of South Africans that can have two yeah. medals uh, <laughs> at the Olympics, especially for, with rugby. Mm. So that was something special also. And just to the moment that I that I cherish this thing because the first time when I went there in 2016, it was just like a, tourna a tournament for me. I will have another one maybe four years later, but then I, then I had a break. That's quite a burn. Leg, uh, tail in between your legs. Somehow it feels like the momentum's against you, but you show up with that hunger. You show up with that deeper commitment and something bigger than I thought anybody expected as a South African. And you showed us that, hello, Vietnam, <laughs> but it's we are clearly coming through. What was that like? What was the mindset going into that game, knowing we've taken our all? What do you do in a match like this? And all the comments and the talks that have been going around have sort of um, made us focus on that. And when we just channel our focus within the group as, as Roscoe touched on and where we just focus on the team and what we can do and focusing on where we want to be as a team and playing for each other. I think that's when you change your mindset mm. and you focus on just achieving something for, for the boys next to you, you know, because the negativity will always be there. The people, there will be people that will write you off. There will be people that will um, say bad things about the group, but if we shut out that external noise and focus within, focus on what we're trying to achieve and the plan that we have uh, running on that field, I think that's what actually changed and shifted the moment. Like you're about to go into a war and knowing that you've got the country's pressure on your shoulders after almost being written off. How do you approach that challenge, yeah. man? Yeah, personally, um, especially at last day, it's tough to wake up and know you still have two tough games ahead because it's semi-finals and finals. You yeah. You know, you're going to get stuck in like big time. Um, but yeah, it's as soon as you run onto that field, all the pressure and you, f you, you forget about your... So your moment where you realize that um, the game is over. And again, really, I have to mention Salvin David's name. He's, he's our captain, he's our leader. And just handing that ball over to Sean Williams, letting him dot it down just to secure that bronze medal was really something special. Uh, a quintessential moment, man. Roscoe? At, yeah. at that moment, I knew if the the right guys have the ball in their hand, like Sean there. Then I just, I told him from the outside, Sean knows it, dum -dum. <laughs> So he's gonna, he's gonna step him or he's gonna goose him. And the guy that was in front of him, I know it was a forward. So I knew <laughs> Sean is gonna beat this guy anytime. And as he goes the guy, then it's like, it's, it's over. We, we're getting a medal now, no matter what. We have the bronze, is ours. 
They can do nothing, no. Yeah. And then at the end. Thank you once again. South Africa is proud of you. You've done all of it and some. I hope you can enjoy your holiday. I hope you can enjoy these medals around your necks. A little piece of history right there with the Eiffel Tower being a part of those medals. But Zanzi, this is what it's about. Put your hands together. Olympic champions. We're talking about bronze medalists. SA7's Blitzbocker. We salute you, gentlemen. Thank you. <laughs>